Hi everyone, I hope you're all doing well and today we're talking about when to sell a stock. So this is kind of a video that's a little bit more of a helpful video rather than talking about individual stocks and you guys seem to really be enjoying these like little kind of tip videos that I'm doing at the moment. So uh, if you'd like them to carry on, make sure you smash that like button. I can tell you like them then and I'll kind of do a few more of these. And today, like I say, we'll talk about when to sell a stock, which is probably one of the most trickiest things in the stock market. I think that from a, an investing point of view, uh, especially as like, you know, a long-term investor, and I'm coming at this uh, today as a, you know, like someone who's a long-term investor, holds stocks for two to five years. And um, that's kind of my point of view. But even so, like, even if you're longer term than that, one of the most difficult things in, in stock market investing is deciding when do you take them profits? Um, and, you know, it's really hard to actually find the point where you, you know, you take it and then you're out and you move on to the next one. I would say that this subject is probably um, one of the three hardest things in the stock market. I think when to sell a stock is definitely probably up there in the top three. I would say that trying to value a growth stock, I think value stocks and dividend stocks are quite easy to value, but actually valuing a growth stock, especially a growth stock that doesn't make profit, is very tricky to do because it, depending on what industry it is, certain growth rates, you know, <laughs> you've got not a lot of metrics to work with. It's, you know, it's quite difficult. You can't just look at a P ratio and go, yeah, it's a P of 10, that's it. And you, you know, you look at growth stock and like a P of, 1000 and it's like one of those it's you know it's one of the really tricky things to do so i think yeah when sell stock is tricky valuing a growth stock is a, another tricky one that we have and i also think um the other one is you know managing them emotions in the stock market i'd say that's the the third tricky one you know that's one that you kind of get with time but even so even when you come you know quite an experienced investor managing your emotions is definitely one of those tricky ones and um you know, it's one of those where, you know, if your stock goes down, you know, 10, 20%, you know, being able to stomach them and like average into them positions, it takes a little bit of confidence, you know, and it's really hard to manage as well as that, you know, when you see the stock market going up and up and up, you know, trying to resist that, you know, FOMO uh, and diving in at the highs and, you know, eventually, you know, you, you at some point you probably make that mistake where you eventually sit on the sidelines for so long and you see it go up and up and up and you go, right, I'm, I'm going to buy it and you buy it and then that's when you get the correction and it goes back to prices that it was at like two months ago maybe even longer than that and you're like ah oh, i should have just waited and it, i think like managing your emotions of you know when you're down on a position when you're up on position watching the stock market when it's going away and kind of like thinking there's never going to be a dip in the stock market um you know it, those those are definitely three tricky things for me so uh i would say that they are the trickiest in the stock market from an investing point of view so today we're going to be talking about when to sell a stock. So in an ideal world, really, if you were to buy a stock and to sell a stock, if we just take a stock chart and we make it nice and easy, and this is what a stock chart looks like. You know, there's not many that have this perfect lineup, but let's just say it's this scenario. And let's say the stock was down here and this was the area that you bought in. And, you know, this gets to the top of the stock and then down here, this is where the stock eventually drops down. And in an ideal world, you'd like to think that you could buy somewhere in this range and you could sell out in somewhere in that range. Now, there's some occasions where you might be able to do that. It's very rare that you'll exactly get it at that pinpoint and that pinpoint. But those are kind of the areas that we're looking for. If you do sell that at that timing, you've done it absolutely perfect. But obviously, you know, that's not always what's going to happen in the stock market so the first thing you're going to do is you've just got to work out the valuation point of view so if you bought down here and the stock is starting to get up to these sort of ranges you've got to look at the valuation and you've got to look at the growth and you've got to be thinking how much more potential is there for this stock to go up now if you look at this stock chart right now and you think and you look at a company and you look at that company and you think it's still pretty cheap valuation you look at the revenue side of it and you think it's still going to have strong valuation. You work out the valuation, you look at the growth, potentially think, I think the stock's still going to go up from here. Then you're probably not going to sell that stock. You're going to carry on letting it run. The problem is, is when you start looking at the growth and then you look at the valuation and you're thinking the valuation, the growth, thinking there's a lot of this growth priced in now, the valuation isn't great, and then you sell out there. That's fine because even if the stock just goes up a little bit more, what are you missing out on? Probably. 20% gain maybe something around that range but if you as long as you've made a massive 100% gain on a company and you're selling it out and you only miss out on 20 
what's 20% gain really after 100% gain? And that actually leads me on to the next point, is if you're looking at that now, where the stock is, and you work out the company only has 20% upside from here, and you go look at another company, and you and you see this company at this stage, where it's gonna go up to this stage, so let's just say that you work out the upside is a value, valuation of about 100% when you're investing into a company. You think I'm gonna make over 100% on this company. You've gotta kind of look and weigh at that going, I've, I've got my company, I'm up 20% now, but I've got this opportunity now though where I'm back here at this stage. Should I keep my money in this stock here where it's gonna give me that 20% return? Or should I feed it into here back to this 100% return? So one of the things that you would sell out of a stock is when you actually realize that the valuation upside isn't that much. It's kind of got to the peak side of it and there's a better opportunity out there. So that's the big thing. As well as that, I talked about this on the video not so long ago, is that for you, the, when you get to this point and you hadn't sold out, it's, you don't have that money. It's not profit, okay? It looks good. It looks good on your portfolio. You know, you get them green eyes looking at your portfolio every day and going, look at that stock, it's up 100%. Next day, you know, if that stock has a rough earnings and it's down 30%, you're like, oh crap, why didn't I sell out with that company? You know, a lot of people get green eyes in this situation where they start looking at the portfolio and go, that looks really nice, that percentage, but it don't really matter until you sell it, you know? That profit isn't yours until you actually sell out of it. And the thing as well is if you get at this point, and I'm just using 100% as an example as a round figure, but you take that out, you've just doubled your money at this point. And if you can find a stock back at this position, you put it in there, you're gonna have double the money into it now. And if you can put that back into there, get it to there, double your money again, this is how easy it is just to build your wealth up, you just repeat that process all the time. So it's all about how much upside you have from that stock and the valuation and what other opportunities are out there and how much more upside there is from here. And that's what you gotta be really careful of. You don't start getting them green eyes because your portfolio's up quite a bit or stock's up quite a bit. You know, that can go out overnight, you know, until you actually click that sell button on that pro that profit you have, it's not really yours. So that's something you've, you know, you've always gotta be, you know, really careful of. So obviously we've got kind of, you know, how much upside there is there, how much is left in the company, is there better opportunities out there? Those are all the things that you're gonna have to put in your process when you're looking at selling stock. There is one thing, and that is if something fundamentally changes with the company. And that could be, you know, we're not talking about 100% gain here. You know, your stock could be down a little bit, it could be up a little bit. But if something changes with your company that you don't like, that might be a time where you sell. If you see something like a management change you don't like, maybe they're not doing a certain income stream anymore, and you thought that was a bad decision. If the company's moving in a direction you're not really a big fan with, if you see some sort of red flag that you don't really like, then you know, you that's another way that you would sell out. Obviously, that's we're not talking about profit side here. So, for example, uh, Uber, I sold out two weeks ago, um, which I was a company that I didn't make 100% on. I think I actually made about 15, 20% on, so not a huge amount what I'm normally used to. But I looked at that, and I, that situation for me was where I looked at Uber and I thought, I don't like how the COVID has affected the company. I think it's going to take a really hint, big hit on the earnings. I don't see them being profitable for now for another probably four years which means it's gonna really hurt the balance sheet, which means they're probably gonna to have to raise more cash, maybe dilute shareholders. So I thought from that point of view, the company's changed because I thought they're gonna be profitable in two years. Now I've seen them being profitable in four years, which wasn't a great thing. I also saw the situation that was going on with the California, the potential riders and taking them on as contractors and how much that makes up their revenue. And I thought that's a big problem there. And I think they might lose that. So I had two fundamental things that really changed with the company. And when I put them both together, I was like, just not for me now. And I, I, that's why I sold out of it. And, you know, one of those, we sometimes, you know, you've got to be brave and make them decisions that you think that this company is not as good as what when you bought it. And potentially maybe you made a slight little wrong decision. Sometimes you look at things and you think that wasn't, you know, you didn't know that back at the time when you bought it. But sometimes you've got to be brave and you know, you know, you can't just sit there with your hands over your ears not listening. Sometimes you've got to just take it and move on. So there's also the fundamental side of it. So you've kind of got the, the point of how much upside is there? Is it worth holding that upside for that percentage when it also it could go down that percentage? So how much you know reward to risk is there there? And also you've got to be looking about, you know, is there other opportunities out there? You know, sometimes you just sell it, move on to the next opportunity, because if that next opportunity is gonna give you the bigger upside than what it would do holding the stock, definitely makes sense to move it on there. And sometimes, like I say, a few quite new people, 
uh, in the stock market, get them green eyes and go, you know what, I'm going to hold this stock for a really long time. But you know, what are you going to do? Hold hold the stock for 20 years and then sell it. And then you, you're you going to take the profits from there. And you know, you, you, you've had your a cash held in a stock for 20 years and you're going to take the benefits 20 years down the line and only take that profit from one stock when you know it kind of makes sense in that time you could have gone through five six stocks and you know multiplied your money six times in that time and as well as that in that time if you really wanted to you could just shift some of that money back into your bank account and go treat yourself so like i say sometimes you just got to weigh up your options and hopefully that cleared that up a little bit today guys so i hope you enjoyed that one about how when to sell a stock like I say guys, smash that like button, subscribe if you're new around here, and I'll see you in the next video.